How's it going, everybody? This is Dan, and this is Stories of Dan, episode 13. Welcome back. And today, I'm going to be doing a little book review on a book I've just read. Uh, it was a really good book, and I don't read, I haven't really read a book in a long time. Uh, I did start another book recently, but paused it because I heard this book recommended on a Joe Rogan podcast. Uh, not really recommended, briefly mentioned. And the little brief mentioning was enough to spark my interest to go check it out. Now, the book is called McGordy, A Pool Room Hustler. It was written, uh, written. It was written by Robert Byron. And it's pretty much about the life of a man named Danny McG uh, McGordy who grew up in the 1900s. Um, you know, and as he grew up, he went through the Great Depression and... You know, he became this pool room hustler, this really good pool player, uh, you know, known throughout the country at a point. And, you know, it kind of just goes briefly, not briefly, but it goes over his life account. Now, the whole book was forwarded by Robert uh, Byron, who is also, uh, I guess, a really famous billiards player. And, you know, it kind of talks in the beginning of the book. Uh, how he finally met Danny McGordy. He'd heard all these stories about him and all this crazy stuff. And once he kind of finally met him, he kind of became friends with him at a point. And after becoming friends with him, you know, always wanted to write a story about his life. Um, so yeah, he, you know, he, he kept talking to McGordy about like writing a book or, you know, just taking down the accounts of McGordy's crazy life. And uh, near McGordy's later years and uh, the, the downfall of himself or his death was pretty much he got cancer. And at that point, he, you know, he figured it was time to kind of like get his tail down or he felt that he should um, tell his tale to this guy, Robert Byron. And then from there, Robert Byron, you know, just recorded him and took all the recordings and then turned it into this book. Pretty much um, the book reads very well. It's. You know, you start off the book and it goes right into the story. And this guy lived in a crazy life. It was super, like, just the time period he lives in seems so different, so crazy, but yet so many similarities to what every single person on this planet has grown up doing. You know, he talks about when he was 18, you know, just running around with his friends, kind of just not really doing much, slacking off. His aunts wanted him to get a job, but he didn't want to. He just kind of played pool. He would sneak into the pool rooms when he wasn't allowed to, wasn't old enough yet, and, you know, try to play a few games when the owners of the pool halls weren't looking and all that kind of stuff. And he'd just get into mischief. He'd go to these dances and, uh, you know, they'd all, all his friends would try to pick up women or they just, you know, stuff like that. Um, and it was just crazy. And the part one is they, the beginning of the book, the, there's, there's uh, about four parts to the book, and each part has, you know, a handful of chapters within them. Um, part one, it's just called Growing Up Drunk. And so he pretty much, he lived with his aunts for a while. Um, his, he did, uh, his mother did raise him for quite some time. Um, he, but he did, you know, he, uh, you know, he just, she forced him to do a lot of things he didn't want to do, like learn how to dance and stuff like that. And, you know, um, he was close to her, but he also disappointed her a lot. Where, and she would also be gone for work a lot. And eventually he disappointed her so much that she never really wanted to see him again. And from there, like his family life was very uh, empty. There wasn't a lot. He had his aunts, but even at a point they gave up on him. And he was just this, uh, you know, billiard, hustling, drunk, drunken womanizer guy, just living life and not really caring. He would hold jobs for a little while just to uh, get back up on his feet if he had to. And then he would... Uh, go back to the pool rooms and hustle away his money or spend it on alcohol and all that stuff um, The book is really great. There's a lot of crazy stories in here of him. Just I don't know all the he taught there's a whole literally an entire chapter of um, Him just talking about like women and uh, how he would you know all the women he tried to score with and the his pretty much like his sex life and uh, You know the problems he had his pretty much he talked about his addictions of uh, broads and alcohol and you know he always his his big thing I guess when he was growing up was trying to like uh, you know lay a virgin and just like stuff like that and it's all the crazy different um, slang and stuff that's in there from how they used to talk back then but yeah he just lived this crazy life and eventually you know he uh, 
you know, he just, he got married at a point and he lived in Chicago. And, you know, at this time, you know, people would always be breaking you down for your money, like the ro cops and the robbers, not the cops and the robbers, but you know, like cops, you had to pay them off or sometimes they would just beat you up for just standing around. And especially once the great depression came around, if you didn't look like you were looking for work, that was a reason for them to throw you in jail or put you on like a chain gang or something random like that. So he, throughout his whole life, he's had this struggle of just like not really having a lot of money, but also not really want, like holding on to jobs because he doesn't enjoy doing them. Um, and yeah, this, there is this uh, one story in the book where he meets his friend, one of his buddies from the pool hall shows up with this really attractive girl and he's really not, uh, out of the friends he said his friend really wasn't like a good looking dude and when you know he kind of tricked his friend to go check out some car that was outside that uh, another buddies of theirs had brought over or something like that and once his friend had left he uh, swooped in on the girl that he had brought and like asked her to dance and since his mom made him take all these dancing lessons obviously he was able to like dance really well and impress the girls uh, he eventually finds out this girl is uh, some, uh, like pretty wealthy for the time and has like an 18 room like apartment at this one place and her mom's out of town for a few weeks. They pretty much end up going there and just throwing a big party like, you know, for the whole time that the mom's gone. Um, eventually, like they're, they have to clean up this big mess and the mom's supposed to be showing up and he hasn't left the room he's been with this girl the whole time and they've just been like drinking having sex and like doing whatever and he's wearing uh the girl's mom's komodo or something and when they're trying to figure out how to clean all this stuff up all of a sudden like the mom like opens the door and shows up at the house um you know freaks out because he's like defiled this girl and she's just yelling at him like all this stuff and uh you're not like he didn't force her on anything you know what I mean but like he like she had, you know as a mother she didn't want especially at that time like you know it's just seems you it's like more you like people got married more and you didn't have sex until you're married and people actually kind of followed those rules um but yeah so you know it's just and then yeah so pretty much the mom freaks out and there's that whole story I don't want to ruin it if you want to go read it it's a great book there's plenty of crazy stories in there um yeah and then pretty much it just it talks about him during the Great Depression. He would hop trains and do all that kind of stuff. Um, he never really liked begging for money, and he did it one time. And once he did it once, he said he'd never do it again. And yeah, he pretty much traveled from Chicago. He got married at a point, but um, was never could never stay truly faithful to her. But she never really uh, got mad at him ever. And that for some reason that bugged him when she never scalded him or got mad at him for anything was just really calm whenever he did something wrong he didn't like that so he would leave um, but yeah he left he told her that he's gonna go to San Francisco to uh, like you know look for work and that he'd send for her once he was there and had a place for them to stay but he never eventually did that he ended up going back to Chicago again living with her for a while and then leaving again uh, because of the same issues um, this book goes all over the place and one of the, the most savage things in here that I can remember right now is uh, his wife at one point asked him to um, go get some like rye bread from the corner store. And he said that he called back a week later and said the store didn't have any rye. And she was pissed because obviously he had left and like just gone and, uh, you know, done whatever to pretty much abandon her or whatever. Um, but yeah, so he, you know, he lived this crazy life. Um, and he did end up kind of, he had some successes in pool here and there. He ran some billiard shops. You know, he moved all around the country pretty much constantly. Uh, he said the most money he ever had at like one time was about like $10,000. Um, and he was surprised that he could ever save it. But he also dealt with, uh, you know, just being a drunk and an alcoholic most of his life. And near the end of his life, he was able to kind of finally kick that off of him. And um, But by then you know, billiards and stuff. The whole sport was coming down to a close. It was dying. Uh, there wasn't too much interest in it. Uh, at a point it did kind of spark back up. Uh, but then it was a little too late. He was, he was pretty old. He did do some pool lessons for a time. Um, yeah, he was about 69 years old, uh, near the end of the book. So you pretty much go throughout his whole, the whole book just covers as much as he can remember of his whole life. 
Uh, he ended up having uh, like dinner with President Kennedy one time. Like he didn't even know anybody. He was at the White House as a tourist, and there was some crazy dinner that was about to happen, and they didn't have enough people for the tables, so they started just grabbing random people out of the like the bunch of tourists visiting the White House that were dressed nice. Um, yeah, it was just the book is crazy. Such a interesting person such an interesting interesting story i'm probably not doing it any justice but you should definitely go read this book there's so much in here that um has left out you know um him brewing his own alcohol him running alcohol him, all the stories of hustling people for money and the ways he would do it his techniques um just his talk and love about the game especially and then near the end you know it's just the ending is it's so this book is almost just like a whole, you know, it's just like cap, a capsule of this guy's life. And you start out when he's 18 in the book, and it's just a thrilling story of him, like, growing up, doing all the stuff we do when we're young, and then getting older, getting married, uh, you know, dealing with hardships, losing friends, because uh, he lost a lot of, you know, pool players here and there, you know, losing these friends and just going through life. And then you get to the end of this book, and... You know, the the game he loves is kind of dying. There's not much going on anymore. Um, he eventually ends up getting cancer, uh, sadly. And at the age of 69, uh, starts losing strength. He's in and out of the hospitals forever. Um, and then one of the last things they kind of talk about in the story was, you know, he could still kind of hit the cue around, but at a point he was unable to, like, demonstrate the shots to people because he was so weak from the, uh, the treatment he was getting for his cancer. But he said uh, one of the last things that they talked about, like, I wouldn't say it's probably, I don't know if it was his last game, but he said that he was like walking by a, a store and it was kind of like a mom pop kind of store, but they had one of the coin operated uh, pool tables. You know, you put the coins in, click the thing, balls come out, you can rack them up. And then once you're done playing that game, you got to pay another dollar. And he said there was a young kid just kind of playing on the table and he, you know, he walked in there and just ask it if you want to play a few games for a few bucks and like he was just talking about like oh you know it felt like old times you know all that stuff and then he kind of gave a description of his uh apartment that he lives in that used to be this nice luxury apartment but he said you know in time like they fired the bellboys they fired the doorman then there was a highway that got it in like next door so pretty much just like you know one of those old buildings that you see around town nowadays that's like you know, it looks real fancy, but it's, you could tell it's from a different time. It's a different era and it's just old now and it's rotting away. Like that's pretty much, he described it like, you know, the town was done with this apartment kind of thing. And, uh, you know, it'd be, eventually it'd be gone. And that just like he was, um, but yeah, he died at the age of 69, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, from look, reading this book, I don't read a lot of books. This is probably one of the first books I've read and finished in quite a long time. Uh, besides the No Country for Old Men book, which I do have another episode on. So go check that out. Uh, but yeah, you know, it's uh, it was a great book. And it really, I, I think a lot of people should read it. It's a great story and uh, an interesting life by this man. And I truly think, you know, he lived a really good life. He may have died a little younger than some. But um, I think he lived every day to the fullest. And even though he, you know, wasn't making money or maybe didn't do a whole lot, he did, uh, you know, I believe he probably felt he lived a fulfilled life. But yeah, you know, I definitely recommend it. McGordy, A Pool Room Hustler, written by, written by Robert Byron. Uh, go check it out, guys. It's a really good book. And yeah, this is the first, like, little book review I've done on this thing. And I'm going to... There is another one. I was at this place the other day and I came across another book about a pool room hustler and all of it is all the stories and stuff are accounted for. They're 100% truthful. Along with this one, this is a true accounting of this man's life. Yeah, so maybe uh, when I'm done, I'll do another video or another book review on that uh, book on the pool hustler one. But yeah. That's pretty much it, guys. Thanks for listening to the stories with Dan, episode 13.